Hello and welcome back to awtoolbox.com. My name is Glenn Keller and what we're doing in this series is we're diving into and learning about Active Workspace customization. We're going to do this from the perspective of someone brand new, um, but we are also going to be talking about differences from previous versions to new versions and we'll be trying out new capabilities in the software as we go through it. The 2506 software is what we have on the screen, and this is the Active Workspace window. If you are unsure about that, then you should go definitely check out our Active Workspace Using Basics course uh, on whatever version you're working with. Also note that this is the first in a series that the customization and development side of the house has changed a little bit over the years. We've went from everything from GWT, Google Widget Toolkit development, all the way through React, uh, which is what Siemens is running now. So just note that each individual build of Active Workspace is just a little bit different, but we have been pretty stable at the React side for a little bit. And most of the development in this series is going to be basically interacting with and tweaking out-of-the-box components to achieve tasks. Now, there are others that go deeper into custom development and those types of things. Um, but this will be mostly X XML, JSON, uh, HTML. Uh, we'll go through CSS, a whole bunch of different capabilities before we have to fall back on actually writing code. So in here, we are going to use the developer environment in Active Workspace, but we need to understand where that is and how it lives. So in this video, we're going to dive in and open up the infrastructure that makes up this Active Workspace client. Um, in other videos, you've seen us dive into the Rich client. Uh, that's an Eclipse-based application, whereas this has its own IDE kind of like Eclipse if you're used to working with that. So let's just kind of step into this. I'm going to drag Active Workspace over to the side. I have a fresh upgraded version of 2506. And how I got here is actually recorded in the upgrade, the 2412 to 2506 video and series that we have out there. So definitely check that out if you want to see why we have some quirks with our software uh, in this demonstration. For instance, our TC root will be 2412, and that's just because Deployment Center kept that as a default, video, uh, default value in the path, and we didn't change it. So, but it is absolutely a 2506. The cool thing is development hasn't really changed that much since about 4.3. So a lot of the pro programs, a lot of the executables, the whatever we're running is going to be fairly similar between those versions. In here, let's just kind of get back into this. I've got Visual Studio Code and I'm going to use this primarily as my editor because it gives me the capability to run utilities and uh, different applications and uh, extensions to help me with the code. So I'm going to say file open folder from Visual Studio Code. I do have a tip. I recommend opening this application as administrator, and that way its terminal has administrative rights if you are an administrator. So I'm going to say open folder. And where this is installed is inside of your TC root location. If I come into C apps, go into Siemens, and then you can see Team Center 2412. It's actually 2506. Um, and I can prove that here in a few minutes. And then if I come in here, I've got my TC root location. And then if you have an Active Workspace client installed, it can be installed in its own standalone folder, its own TC root. Uh, it could be installed on any one of a number of servers, but typically it's installed with your gateway uh, and your microservices installation because that's where it gets deployed up to. And we'll go into a little bit about architecture and why things work the way they do in a future video. But the Active Workspace, the AWS2 folder, contains the stage directory. And this is the heart and soul of Active Workspace client customization. So what's cool is this directory can actually be copied and pasted elsewhere. And you can use that as your development server. So I could literally take this, copy it and put it on my desktop and work out of there if I wanted to so that I don't muddy up the original. 
Now, for the sake of fun, we're just going to muddy up their original at the moment. Whatever you decide, make sure you open that folder. I'm going to go into stage, and you can see there's a whole bunch of files in here. When I hit select folder, it'll open up in Visual Studio Code, and I can start my development journey. So I typically don't use this welcome screen. I just kind of close it and then let the stage directory, which is over on the left-hand side, guide me in interacting with the files. But you do need to know a little bit about what you're working with in here in order to work effectively. So we've got a couple of caveats in this video. One is that we are starting from the ground up. Ground up. Uh, so what that basically means is, yes, there are some capabilities in the Active Workspace client that allow you to work with some of the capabilities that we are developing. However, to fully understand how the client is doing what it is doing, you need to understand the architecture behind the scenes. Not only that, but it is important that you go in and understand everything that's going to be developed as you're working in the interface and understand how those changes get back to the system. So again, we're going to be working ground up. Number two is basically that we're going to be working with fundamentals. So we're going to understand each and every script that we typically use. Um, we are going to understand how everything is constructed and how to properly build customizations. And we're going to explore new things. So I'm going to call this fundamentals. So we'll get into fundamentals. And then three, uh, we're going to begin to build examples. So we're going to build some examples. So for this series, this will kind of get you up and going with development you'll learn a lot as you go into the different components that are necessary to build things that go into active workspaces client um, but it'll also set you up for the next series which will be getting into okay now that we have some examples built out how do we link those examples to standard use cases and what are some alternatives in the administrative realm that we could use instead of having to do this or what do we want to do so ground up fundamentals and then build some examples so to start with um, the ground up view of this is really the stage directory and we've provided a whole bunch of links to the documentation that gives you a breakdown of what's all in here. Now, I can tell you that over the years, this has changed a lot, and a couple of things that you'll notice are AW build. These two scripts here, um, this used to be a GWT build, and we used to run NPM run build or run publish. Um, so it's kind of been a different set of iteration uh, of commands that we run to execute things. So this is now the create node modules, go in and actually run, build, run, publish. So call npm run publish, npm run build. So this will run and build your entirety of all of your stuff, but we're going to understand all of the other things as well. So in here, we've got a whole bunch of different files, the key ones, uh, the out directory is going to be where your client is generated. And then right before it gets published up to the interface, in this directory you'll see backups of your files after com compilation. The public folder used to be utilized for other things. The source folder is going to be your primary work area. So this is going to be where your customizations get created, uh, your custom module, your kit. Uh, it'll also contain all of the out of the box definitions and feel free to explore. There's a ton of examples and use cases in there. Everything from syntax to formatting, oh, the sky's the limit. Uh, and then your images that you can use inside of the system as well as all the out of the box icons. So there's a bunch in there. And then in here, if I come down just a little bit further, I have the solution, which is where my workspace contributions and things like that are going to be. 
So we'll get deeper into each one of these as we go. Um, other things are going to be like the bin. And this is where some of the core functionality that you're going to be using npm node package manager is installed with the out of the box active workspace. You can get in there if you're kind of more advanced and do things, but it's up to really what you're trying to do. And we're going to keep it core team center in here. Um, a lot of other scripts that you can run. So these are all things like building your SOA documentation, going into and exporting from Darcy into the build, uh, performing an audit against your data. So we'll run a lot of these commands throughout the process. And then your local node package manager server, uh, as well as a whole bunch of scripts down below and files that you can work with. Notably, a readme. So notice here, the readme is published with every version of Active Workspace. And if you just look at it, it tells you exactly how to do the primary build, set environment variables. Now, again, Windows only for this one. Um, what you need to look at when you're dealing with a install configuration. Um, so the tim.properties file is important for that. The source directory is going to be where all of your customizations live. And then the package JSON file details out what you're going to uh, essentially have in there. So uh, if I close this out, we can do just one simple thing here. So just to show you, this is a brand new install, brand new upgrade. If I come into terminal and say new terminal here, I need to make sure I'm not in PowerShell. I'm gonna come into command prompt I'm going to delete the PowerShell entry from the right hand side over here. And then I'm going to come in. So if I run something like npm run generate module, which is one of the commands, npm run audit. No. So right off the get go, when you CD here, it's not going to give you permission. You have to run the file that you see over here. It's initenv.cmd. So I'm gonna say initenv.cmd. And this is gonna set a whole slew of environment variables uh, related to this environment. So this adds stuff to your path, so don't, run, don't get happy and run this a whole bunch of times. But uh, if I come in here, I'm going to run a CLS just to clear the screen. It doesn't mean anything is unset, but that sets up my development environment. Now, if I do something like an NPM run audit, then what you're going to see here is it's going to identify that, first of all, this is a valid function. Um, and then it's going to go further with that and it's going to actually perform the function. Now, I don't have any added code, so hopefully the out of the box build doesn't blow up on us. But that's what this is doing here. It's providing me a way to build, audit, publish my changes from this location to that location. It's giving me a development location where I can stack my customizations. And then I can duplicate the stage folder and have it basically, I can have an environment or I can have a sandbox for each one of my developers. And then I could use tools like Azure DevOps to merge the different code changes and keep a handle on what I've changed and what I haven't. Now you can see that that script ran just fine. Note, there are other scripts that start with a W that we'll talk about in this version. Um, but the sky's the limit with development. We'll get into a lot of other capabilities in future videos, but we're running up to about 15 minutes on this one and we wanna cut it down. So in the next video, what we're going to do is we're going to start taking a look at a deeper look at the source directory. So how do we build modules in Active Workspace? What are the important files in this directory that we can utilize? And what are the different things that we can build with modules? Things like commands, themes, workspaces, and whatnot.